Hello, I'm Rob Potash with CSMI, and today I'm going to compare the Humac Norm by CSMI to the Biodex System 4 Pro. If you're going to compare the two machines, the easiest way to do a comparison is to break it down into four pieces. The first piece is the actual design of the machine. The second piece is the chair. The third piece is the dynamometer. And the last piece would be the reports. When you look at the overall design of the machine, the Biodex is a T-base, which requires the user to move the chair, fore and aft, and the dynamometer across. Separate of that, it includes a computer cart, which has cables that lead on the floor to the machine and requires the user to move the cart from side to side as you're changing sides. The Humac Norm, the patented inline design Humac Norm, has a computer inside the electronics frame, so there's no cart to move around, and there are no cables that lead to the cart. So it's a much more efficient design for the user and more space efficient. When you're changing sides, just move the, the monitor cart to the other side. The second thing you want to compare is you want to look at the chair itself. So the Humac Norm chair actually is 40% larger than the Biodex chair. The advantage of a larger chair is your patients are more secure and more comfortable in the chair. Also, the Humac Norm chair is more stable than the Biodex machine. When we say more stable, what we mean is I want to do somebody in a prone or supine pattern. I simply lower the chair back and lock it in place. And I can use my machine in a prone or supine pattern to patient secure. With the Biodex System 4, what the user has to do is install a stability bar to hold the seat back in place. Another advantage of the Humac Norm chair is we have what's called a contralateral pad. So the contralateral pad is used to hold the side that's not being tested for knee extension flexion. So if I'm in the norm and you want to test my right side, rather than leave the left side out to flail as somebody's kicking, we actually secure it in place behind the contralateral pad, which gives you better test results because your patient is more secure. So with the Humac Norm, the chair is 40% larger, it's more stable, and your patients are more stable. The dynamometer. Both machines have mechanical range of motion stops. The difference is the Biodex mechanical range of motion stops are fixed. So what that means is when you're changing from the right side to the left side, you have to get take off the right side attachment and put the left side attachment on. With the Humac Norm, because we have what we call adjustable mechanical range of motion stops, first off, our range of motion will always match the patient. The Biodex doesn't do that. Second, when you change sides, so this is set up for the right side, if I was to do the left side, rather than change attachments, I simply need to move my stops to accommodate the other side. The other big advantage of the Humax Norm, it's a combination of the inline design, the chair, and the dynamometer is, it's much faster to change sides. So again, the most popular test is knee extension flexion. With the Humac Norm, when you want to change sides, the process is pretty quick. I simply need to lift up here, I turn my patient out of the way, I lift up here the dynamometer pedestal clamp, I rotate my dynamometer past my patient, I bring the chair back, I snap down the chair, I snap down my dynamometer pedestal, and I simply move my computer to the other side and we're ready to go. The Humac Norm includes over 60 pre-formatted tests. I'm going to cover five. So, reports. When you test somebody, you might want to do an isometric report. For example, an early ACL patient will probably have an isometric test before an isokinetic test. What's unique about the Humac Norm is it actually has an isometric report with the parameters you'd expect to find on an isometric report. So the isometric test report, starting from the top, is the name of the team, the actual test, isometric, patient background information, the test protocol, isometric at 90 degrees, held for five seconds, three repetitions, this is the best rep. 
and then the parameters that you'd expect. So peak torque, right side, left side, deficit. The reason that's red is in the HEMAP program, you can set deficits in the preferences. And if the patient meets or exceeds the deficits, we're going to print them in red so they're easy to find. Coefficient of variation tells us how consistent the patient is from rep to rep. We usually want to see a number of 0.12 or less. And then the body rate ratio lets us compare patients of different sizes. The average torque, the peak torque slope, the time to half peak torque, and then the time to peak torque. So you measure muscle acceleration. This test happens to be a three angle test. So it was done at 90, it was done at 60, and then a third set was performed at 30. After an isometric test, you might move the patient up to what's called an isokinetic test. In this example, it's a 60, 180 degree speed test. So if I click preview, the HUMAC norm isokinetic test report. At the top of the report is the name of the team. The test report, this is a short form torque versus position that's referring to the grass, knee extension flexion test, the patient background information. So for the curves, what we see are torque over position. The two curves are overlaid. So if we look at the flexion side, you'd see this person's symmetrical. There's no reason for this person to do leg curls. But if you look on the extension side, you'll see there's a big deficit here. And that's why you do isokinetic testing, because it lets you see what you're treating. You can see the deficit here. And if you want to know where the deficit is, just drop down to the bottom. So 90 degrees is where they start to deviate. And they come back together at around 30 degrees. So this patient would have an exercise protocol which would involve short arc repetitions through this range. If I go down my test, my protocol is isokinetic, concentric, concentric, so kick pull. My test speed is 60 degrees, five repetitions, extension values, flexion values. So peak torque, it's in foot pounds, you can also set it to Newton meters. Best repetition, you can also set it to average. Right side, left side, deficit. And again, the deficit is in red because we can set Deficit thresholds that if the patient meets or exceeds, we print in red. Coefficient of variation is how consistent my patient is, and body rate ratios let me compare patients of different sizes. Peak torque is the top of the torque curve, work is the area under the curve, and range of motion makes sure my patient's traveling the same distance, my work value should be similar. And then this would be the high speed test result. Okay? If we looked at this test and the curves overlaid, the deficits were small, we would stop. But looking at this test, you can see there's a deficit here. We might want to dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper would mean a curve overlay report. So I'm going to click angle. Okay, the UMAC norm curve overlay report overlays both sides and then it subtracts the two. So if we start at the bottom for flexion, so this is a knee extension flexion test. So these are my hamstrings. So my right and left side overlays, you can see there's not much difference. What we also do is we subtract the two and create what's called the difference curve. So ideally, it looks like this. The difference curve runs along the bottom. So we go up to extension, the quadricep. Again, if the curves are related, be great, but they don't. So we see a separation here. So if we look at the difference curve, it's kind of running along the bottom, and then it pops up, pops up, pops up here. There's the maximum deficit at 70 degrees in the range, and it kind of comes back in line. So if we want to document these points, what we can do is we can just say, okay. Well, let's put in 30. So there's only one, def one, uh, one deficit there, 1%. I can move it around. I might want to measure 70. That's the maximum deficit. And at that point, my deficit is 31%. Then I might come back here and go up at 95. So if I was building a training program for this person, based on this information, we wouldn't be doing hamstring curls because the patient's fine. We wouldn't be doing terminal extension exercises because there's no deficit here. We'd be doing short arc exercises between about 95 and 30 degrees in the range of motion. If you test a patient twice, the person they're going to ask is, how did I do compared to the last time? So what we need to do is get what's called the progress report. So we click progress. It's going to list all of our tests. We need to find two tests with the same protocol. So we'll take this test. And we'll make that our initial test. Then we'll find a second test with the same protocol. We'll make that the follow-up test, and we'll press preview. And what this will do is it'll place the two reports on the same page and subtract them from each other. The UMAC Norm Progress Report. At the top of the page is the name of the team, followed by the report label, followed by the patient background information. 
For the graphs, we overlay the graphs for the initial and the follow-up test so you can get a visual comparison of the athlete's performance. Moving down the page, you'll see the protocol was isometric, concentric, concentric. The speed for 60, 60, and it was five repetitions. Across the top of the column, it's tensors and flexors. Test one results from eight four, test two results from eight seven, change between the two. Small difference between the norm and the biodex progress report. The norm progress report actually has right and left side data for the initial test and the follow up test. The biodex progress report only compares the involved side from the first time it was tested to the involved side from the second time it was tested. So you can't see how the deficit might improve over time. You can't look at the next norm. So the right side, left side test at the bottom, highlighted the base theta value, and then work repetition and then the range of motion. The last report on the humic norm is the group summary. The first time you test the patient, they're going to ask how they did involved to uninvolved side. The second time you test the patient, they're going to ask how they're doing from the first time they were tested to the second time they were tested. But sooner or later, they're going to ask how, how are they doing compared to other people just like them. So what the humic norm has is a group summary program. What the group summary does, which is unique, is it actually summarizes the data that you've collected. So your patients with your protocols. Select summary, select the pattern you want to summarize, select the protocol you want to use, press add to create a group, and we'll just call it NC. We highlight a group. And then what was previously the background information becomes our filters. So this is where we can say, hey, find everybody that was tested between a particular date range, or find everybody that is a certain age. So we can say 45 to 65, so 65. I just want to look at the males. If I'm looking, I could pick a particular team if I wanted to. I could do a particular diagnosis. I can do days post-injury, surgery, uh, surgery date, or I can grab a particular doctor, or I can just grab the test that I performed. Click OK. All tests are most recent tests, so if someone's been tested more than once, do you want all their tests or just their most recent tests? And how do you want your data sorted? Right, left, involved, uninvolved, dominant, non-dominant. So if you're looking at a pathology comparison, you're probably going to pick involved, uninvolved. Then you press summarize, and what the EMAC does is it runs through the database, finds all the need tests with this protocol, looks at the filters that you pick, grabs the most recent test for each person, then it sorts the data involved versus uninvolved, and you have a nice average of the group. And then what you can do to take it one further is, and then you can say, take this individual patient, this test, and compare this test to the group average. So if I did that, what you'll end up with is the name of the team, the particular person's background information, the group summary filters that we use, who it found, and then this would be the patient. This is the average of the group. And then this is the difference between the patient and the group. So this patient is exceeding the group average.